So now we'll talk about regions, availability zones, and fault domains to introduce these concepts to you and what part they play in deploying your service into a public cloud. In the rectangle here at the bottom, I show a region. Right? This would be a region somewhere on the planet, like the U.S. East region, U.S. West region, or a European region, and so on. Usually within these regions, we have different data centers, which we sometimes call availability zones. And the availability zone has its own independent power and its own networking. So it's, it's set up to be an isolation boundary, right? That if one availability zone goes down, that is it loses its power, or it loses its networking, that wouldn't affect other availability zones that are part of the same region. In fact, I do show two other availability zones here, number two and number three. These are just shrunken down versions of the big green rectangle here. And these availability zones within the region are typically connected to each other using a private fiber optic network. So private mean, you know, specific to the cloud provider, and fiber optic meaning it's blazingly fast. So that if you have some code running in one availability zone and some code or service running in another availability zone, they can communicate with each other with very high speed. Now within an availability zone, we have racks that are set up. And each rack is going to have its own router on it. I don't show that on the slide, but each rack would have its own router on it. And then on that rack, there's a bunch of physical PCs. So here I show on rack one, we have PC one and we have PC two. On rack two, I also show PC one and PC two. And then on any of these PCs, we have virtual machines, like virtual machine one is on all of these PCs, and virtual machine number two on all these PCs. And you can usually get lots of virtual machines on a single PC. A little bit later in the course, I'll be talking about containers. And containers, they run inside a virtual machine. So I'll enhance you know, this, what a VM looks like internally by adding containers to that. We'll talk about that later on, as I said. And then when you create your service, your service or your application has a public endpoint. So this is where your clients on the internet, they would make a request into the region that would usually hit the load balancer, which I showed on the previous slide, I don't show it here, and then the load balancer would direct the traffic. So on the previous slide, I talked about how you might have multiple instances of your code running on different VMs. You want that code running on different VMs that are far apart from each other to reduce the chance of a single point of failure. And a unit of a single point of failure is what we refer to as a fault domain. Right? It's a domain where a fault occurring hurts everything. So I already mentioned the example where you know, if a whole region goes down, then you lose everything inside that region. Right? If a, uh, availability zone goes down, then you lose everything that's inside that availability zone. If a rack goes down, then you lose all the PCs, and if a PC goes down, then you lose all the VMs. Right? So we have this hierarchy that I mentioned here at the bottom, where it was, goes, you know, VM is a, the smallest thing, PC is above it, rack is above it, availability zone's above it, region is above that, and then above that is the planet. Right? So if, the, if you have lots of different regions, but they're all on the same planet, if something happens to the Earth, then we've lost all the regions. So one of the things I kind of like to say is that the planet is a single point of failure, right? or the Earth is a single point of failure. And it's really hard to build a service that's a robust enough against planet failure. Um, another thing to note is that intra-service communication, which is typically used for data replication. So if you have some data that's being stored on a VM and you want to replicate that data to another VM, you want to make sure that that goes into a different fault domain, right? And ideally kind of as far away as possible in the hierarchy of fault domains to give you the better resilience, right? Less chance of losing everything. Um, and, but by moving services further apart in the hierarchy, you are also increasing the latency or hurting the performance of having them communicate with each other. You know, if you're talking to two VMs on the same machine, that's very fast, but if the machine goes down, you've lost everything on the machine. So if you're replicating data there in particular, you know, between two VMs on the same machine, if that machine goes down, you've lost all the replicas. Right? Replicating across two different racks is better, but 
you know, if the availability zone goes down, you've lost all the replicas. Replicating across availability zones within the region is better, but if the whole region goes down, you've lost all the data. And then, of course, you could replicate to different regions. Um, we'll be talking about that. There's two, like, really uh, holy grails, if you will, of distributed cloud applications. Distributed cloud applications are largely about scalability and high availability. And the holy grail of scalability is auto-scaling, right? I mentioned it briefly in the, the previous slide, and I'll mention it a little bit more shortly, where the orchestrator can automatically or dynamically scale your service up and down, right? That's kind of one of the holy grails that people really love. Uh, the other holy grail is about high availability, where if a region goes down, or you know, or some fault domain goes down, that you can switch over and start serving requests from another fault domain. And for data, the holy grail of data is this disaster recovery scenario where you're replicating your data between multiple regions, so if anything happened in one part of the earth, the data can be served from another part of the earth. These are the two like hard problems that people we really like to solve, and we do have some solutions for them, but they're not perfect, especially for the data replication scenario. Um, but these are two of the really main things about distributed cloud apps. So I will be talking about them both more as the course goes on.